Howdy mates, top of the afternoon to ya. Today marks Sunday, October 27th, 2024. We're still at Canyonlands National Park, specifically in the Needles District. But what you're looking at is a unique occurrence. What you're seeing is a confluence, which such a term refers to when two separate rivers join together and form one unit, essentially. So the, the river on the left is the green river, and then the river on the right, for a closer look, that is the Colorado River. But then once they join with one another, that's when it forms the Colorado River itself. There we go. <laughs> I wanted you guys to see that part. This is so cool. Just to think that this is the same river that will eventually meet at the Grand Canyon in Arizona, in another couple of hundred miles from here. But I tell you what, to get here, it took some work. Just from the trailhead alone, it's like a five to five and a half mile hike. And then I still got to make my way back. And between that and the combination from yesterday, I'm going to be quite tired these next couple of days. That is full shoal. Yeah, this is this is neat. Wow, just remarkable. Just what nature is capable. Some of the stratigraphy that you're seeing, you see a bit of that. So it's like right here. That particular layer, at least for part of it is known as the Morrison Formation. And what makes the Morrison Formation in particular special is much of the world's dinosaur fossils have usually been found in that particular layer of limestone or even combination of sandstone. But what makes a bit of that bluish gray, you may be surprised, but it's actually from the combination of copper as well as iron. So usually what can happen sometimes is if the iron has been so devoid of oxygen, sometimes it will turn into a bluish gray. I know, it's quite surprising, isn't it? But there is indeed some trace of copper as well. Going just above that, I believe, is the Moen Kopi formation. It's a very loose red sandstone. Much of the time period that it came from, which I believe came from the Mesozoic era. It was mostly, it came from mud flats or even swamps for the most part. And then going just above, there we go, which is like right there, that's your Cedar Mesa sandstone. Or here's a closer perspective of it, which... Most of this came from sand dunes, for the most part. You can actually, if you look closely, you can see some of that cross bedding in the bedrock itself, indicating uh, past weather patterns. But yeah, uh, not too far away. I'm trying to th coordinate where I am here. Yeah, so going in that direction... 
generally is where Island in the Sky is located. That's one of the districts of the Canyonlands National Park. So it's called Island in the Sky because it's in much higher elevation and it's surrounded by water. So hence why it's called Island in the Sky. But very grateful once again to be out here. All right, you guys, have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And of course, Journey on a Journey is onwards. Take care, folks. See ya.